Welcome to Ignite Elim Church. I'm so glad that you're able to join us today. In today's session, I'm going to be carrying on with my series, Conversations with Jesus, taken from the Gospel of John. I hope that this blesses you. I hope that you're able to share this with someone who isn't a Christian because essentially what happens in this session is we're going to look at the gospel, the good news of Jesus, and give people an opportunity to come to know him personally in their lives. Why don't you hit the subscribe button so that you can see all of our upcoming content and so you can keep up to date with what we're doing. In the meantime, be blessed by this talk. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Guys, if you'd like to, you can grab a seat. We're going to pray for folks at the end of church today. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're into that, if you fancy some prayer, if you're in need today, we will pray for you, I promise. Um, my tech is doing my head in today. I don't know what's wrong with it, but we're going to carry on. Is that all right? Because you're here, right? That's all that matters. I'm going to put my phone over there so I'll stop thinking about it in my pocket. Um, and uh, I'm going to turn to John chapter 5 if you want to join me. Um, we're looking at Jesus today. Um, it's funny. Uh, we were just chatting, uh, me and my lad, the other day, we were chatting about, uh, about we, we've decided as a church that we're going to do one of these campaigns. You know, like uh, we just had a campaign of what we called Hunger Games, looking at justice for a month, you know, and we're looking at doing something similar, like a campaign every three or four months. So we want to do three of those a year, so that's every four months or so. And we are just talking, and Liam said, oh, do you remember back when we was in the community centre when you just did a whole month of just getting to know who Jesus was? You know, that's really important, isn't it? I think it was since that day, how, however many years ago, six years ago, seven years ago, since that day, since that moment, I decided that I wouldn't speak about anything else on a Sunday morning. I'd just give it all up to Jesus. So every Sunday I talk about Jesus. I don't talk about anything else. Um, and the reason for that is because I want you both to, to know him as a person. And then I want you to know the things that he said because all too often I hear people Christians and non-Christians say Jesus said such and such a thing and I think no he didn't I think no he didn't he didn't say that I I get it all the time people say Jesus said this and I go no he didn't because they've never actually read his word or if they do read his word they don't read it often enough my bible okay has uh, my bible is a red letter bible which is cool let me just show you if, if, if I can uh, what that looks like. Here you go, look. See, can you see this? Can you see this? Oh, you watched me f- lose all my notes. Not that I got any this morning. Uh, can you see the red letters in there? The red letters are the, are the words of Jesus, okay? So they put, his, they put his words in red, okay? So that you can find his words really easy. Because his words are surely the ones that matter. You know, the Bible says that he came to earth from heaven to teach us to teach us about something in particular that no one else knows about. Jesus himself said, no one can tell you what heaven is like except the one who's been there. No one can tell you what heaven's culture is like except the one who's been there. Who's been there? Jesus has been there, the Bible says. It says that he was there, then he came here. He didn't start here and then go there like the rest of us. He started up there and then he came here. Okay, And so if we want to know more about God, about spirituality, there's no better teacher than Jesus. So we could literally spend years and years and years just looking at Jesus. His words, the things he says, the things he does. We can just spend years doing that. And even so, we probably still would not have a clue about heaven and about God and about his culture. But nevertheless, I decided six or seven years ago that every Sunday, every Sunday, I would talk about Jesus. Why? I want to know him. When I got to know Jesus, I fell in love with him. Like, I never had a dad growing up, never had a dad at all. My granddad was like a dad. I was going through pictures the other day. We found some old pictures, and I found a picture. I think Liam said, uh, or Sophie came in and said, Dad, we know, we know that Liam's name, so Liam's full name is Liam Michael John Edwards. We know that Michael is Uncle Michael, but who's John? And so I went through, I'm getting goosebumps. I, uh, I went through some of our old photo albums, and I found a picture of John, my granddad. I lived with him for like six years, seven years. And he's the most fatherly figure I've ever known. 
and he died of cancer, you know? And, uh, and I was heartbroken by that. And, um, and he was just like the kindest bloke I've ever met. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect guy. Don't know anyone, I've never known anyone so nice and so kind. He wasn't even a Christian either, which is crazy, isn't it? In the Christian world, we call that common grace. Um, but here's my point. When you get to know someone, it's inevitable that you love them if they're kind and good and loving, right? Yeah? Some of you guys have been around here long enough now that you might have even decided that you love me. Yeah? All right, duck. April, April tells me all the time she loves me. She's like Nanny April. I love it. Thank you, April, by the way. But when you get to know someone and you see who they really are, if they're kind and loving and gracious and stuff, eventually you won't be able to help yourself. You've, you love them, right? And so if I could just show you Jesus and show you him over and over and over again and show you so many different aspects of him that you can see him from all angles, the more you get to know him, I believe you'll fall in love with him. And so that's why I preach Jesus every single week. And even when I preach David, I preach Jesus because, you know, Jesus is all over that stuff. He's all the way through that Bible. Did you know the whole thing is all about him? Anyway, I'm getting away from my preach. Should I read the scripture before? Yeah? We're good? We're happy? Have I explained why Jesus enough? And <laughs> before I start preaching, hang on. You're like, you've already started preaching. Now you're going to be all day. Um, <laughs> before I start preaching, um, this talk is part of a talk that I've been doing, uh, a series that I've been doing for probably about a year or so now already. Uh, we're just looking at the words of Jesus in the Gospel of John. I'm also doing TikToks during the week for those of you that have TikTok. Uh, Josh still hasn't followed me yet, um, but I, we have a TikTok channel, and TikTok is like little two-minute videos, three-minute videos that apparently all of the young people on the estate are watching. There's like 2,000 young people within two miles of here, and uh, none of them are in church today, but let me tell you this, they're all on TikTok this morning, and some of them are watching our video about Jesus. Isn't that good news? And so it's important that we talk about Jesus all the, in, in every media, in every way, everywhere. Yeah, So this is part of a, a, a series that we're calling, or I've called, Conversations with Jesus. It's looking at big conversations with Jesus. I'm, and I, what happens is I think, oh, I'm going to go for a whole chapter, and then we'll see what Jesus is saying in the, big, in the big picture. But you know what I'm like. So today we're reading John chapter 5, verse 21. Um, because you know how I like, just verse by verse, just reading his words. Come on, you ready? Yes, pastor, we're all ready for the word of God. Oh, that's really good news. I'm so glad you're up for it. You all seem really keen today. What, what? <laughs> for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so, the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. Okay? Jesus said, let me read it again. Jesus said, for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so, the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. Okay? Now, I know straight away you're thinking, yeah, I know. Like Jesus raised the dead. Did you know that there are three instances in the Old Testament where uh, prophets on behalf of God put their hand on folks or something along those sorts of lines and Raise the dead. Okay, three. Does anyone know how many times Jesus raised the dead? Oh, oh, you, you've been a pastor as well. Uh, <laughs> three. <laughs> it, Jesus raised the dead three times as well. And you might think, oh, is John trying to prove a point here? Almost definitely. That Jesus is as good, if not greater, than all of the other prophets put together. If between them they can do it three times, then Jesus can do the same. If you count himself, that's four. Right? But that's not the sort of raising the dead that he's talking about just here. It's not the sort of raising the dead that he's talking about just here. Instead, I believe what Jesus is talking about just here is raising the spiritually dead. Okay? So, 
And the Bible paints this lovely picture, and you guys have heard me preach this a million times. You know, poor old Eileen's just come to church for the first time in a few months. She's going to be like, I've heard this one like 20 times already. Um, but it's an important message because actually the Bible says that all of us have chosen to go, go astray. In fact, it, it sort of paints this picture of all of us deciding that we're going to like, you know, walk off away from life and life in all of its fullness. It, it, says that, it says that every single person has chosen the way of their own heart or their own mind instead of God's way. And when we do that, the Bible says that we, essentially, it says that we die spiritually. Um, the, way, the, way, the way that I like to explain this a lot of the time, and the reason I think this is because of, you know in, uh, you know in Genesis chapter 3, you guys know Genesis chapter 3? Most people read Genesis chapter 1, don't they? And they're like, oh yeah, I've got, got this down. I'm going to start reading the Bible. I read Genesis chapter 1 and I don't read anymore, don't they? Um, anyway, um, so Genesis chapter 3 explains how essentially God turns around to Adam and Eve and he says, if you, if you eat of a certain tree, then it, in the old King James Version it says, die in, thou shalt surely die. Die in, thou shalt surely die. Okay? Now, it's my understanding, and I think a lot of other thinkers who think a lot about the Bible, it's, it's our understanding that when he says die in the first time, he's naming them dying. Okay? So, dying, thou shalt surely die, is, hey, person who's dying, you will surely die if you eat of this fruit. Okay? Interesting? I know, suddenly everyone's writing notes. Well, I say everyone, just April. Um, now, the reason for that is because some of us believe that our bodies were never meant to last forever in the Garden of Eden, but that our souls were, or our spirits were. Okay? And so God says, die in thou shalt surely die, because we already had, our bodies already had a death penalty. Okay? And so what happens is, when they eat of the fruit, they don't die physically, right? Did you notice that? Yeah, so when they, eat, when they eat from the tree, they don't suddenly drop dead. Something else is taken away, isn't it? Yeah? Because their eyes are opened, and suddenly they notice something, don't they? Because they were perfect, right? They were perfect, but all of a sudden, their eyes are opened... And they notice they are naked. And they feel a particular emotion. Does anyone know what that emotion is? Shame. They feel shame. So they walked away from what God had planned for them. And the first thing that they notice is that they're naked. The glory has been taken away. Ah, come on. Um, <laughs> the glory has been taken away. Ah, no. Can't believe it, right? And then they notice that, oh no, I feel something, and the thing that I feel is shame. Oftentimes, when we do something that is detrimental to us, and we know that we've done it, we have the same feeling, don't we? Yeah? We feel shame. And that could even be, um, that could even be little things, you know, like... Uh, I was late for a meeting that uh, was a really important meeting online during COVID. And you might say, Darren, there's no need to be ashamed about that. But I just felt so awkward. And like, every time I thought about it, I couldn't help but start speaking in tongues. I was like, oh, it's so awkward. That was a really important meeting. And, you know, there's no reason to be late when you're on Zoom. You know what I mean? And I just forgot about the meeting. I was out like serving the lost and the broken. And then I just forgot about the meeting. And then I arrived like 15 minutes late for it. I was like, oh, no, oh, that's such an important meeting, can't believe it. And I felt a sense of shame. I know, really simple, isn't it? There's nothing really to be ashamed about, really, is there, in that? But I still felt it. And then you might say, well, actually, I, I did something worse than that. I, um, or, like, here's one for me. Someone else does something to me or against me, and then for some weird reason, I feel ashamed because... Because I feel like I put myself in that position 
Do you know what I mean? Does anyone else ever feel like that? Right? And then so you feel shame. And they felt shame as soon as they noticed, uh uh-oh, something has changed. And can you imagine that the thing had changed was the awesome, stepping too far forward, um, the awesome power and presence of God suddenly leaves you and you're no longer clothed in glory. Can you imagine the difference? Like, so this morning, some of you guys have felt a presence in here, okay? And it sort of felt a bit emotional and a bit like, like close, but not too close. But it's like you felt like there's something going on today. And, and, if, and if, we, if we had a bit of an imagination, you might say that I, some of us felt like there was a, a weight of something around our shoulders. Does anyone feel like that today? As you're worshipping, as you was taking communion, as you've been listening today, it felt almost like, like, like a cloak comes around you when you're in God's presence. Anyone else get that? Now, you know that feeling. And if you felt that feeling, then you always want to be in that feeling. We sang that song, didn't we? There's no place I'd rather be than hearing your love. And if you're in that place, then to lose that you know about it. You know when you leave a revival meeting where, where God's actually showed up, right? You know when you go home and you're like, I should have stayed. <laughs> I should have stayed. And you guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. I've been in meetings where you just think, I'm not going home tonight. I'm just going to stay here all night. Set up a little bed and just stay. Because that's the presence of God. And these guys lost that. And the Bible says that they died I believe spiritually the Bible says that all of us have done the same every single one of us and we have all chosen to walk away from God oftentimes the way I describe it um, and you guys would have heard this a million times but luckily there's loads of new people in the room today so it's not old hat for everyone um, I often describe it as like a, say a sunflower plant that decides to get out of its get out of its soil and decide to go for a little walk on its own. And it can only walk so far, couldn't it, the little sunflower, before it dies. And so the thing dies, right? Jesus said that in order to live, or in order to have new growth, the old has to die. And the truth is that our old habits and our old lives are just not particularly good, are they? Does anyone ever feel like... The old stuff just doesn't really feel where I have a hole. The old stuff doesn't really scratch where I'm itching. Well, the Bible says that we've all decided to get out of our little plant pot and go for a little walk. And so subsequently our spirit, being that little sunflower, has shriveled up and died. Because it's not been connected to its life source. The Bible says that because Jesus... Um, is good, he can do something about that. In the Old Testament, the way that it would go is, uh, is uh, in order to try and get right with God, people would make sacrifices. God said for a, a lie, for example, you'd have to sacrifice a little, a little uh, what's that thing called, a little uh, dove or something, or a pigeon, you know? Whereas if you're like, you know, robbed a bank, then you'd have to sacrifice a bull, which costs a lot more, you know? Um, and obviously there weren't banks in those days, but you get the idea. Um, it's a bit like when I go out in my car if I'm caught speeding, which I was a few years back. Um, I thought that I could do 70 when actually I could only do 60. And so I got a speeding ticket. And, uh, and that speeding ticket was £110 for breaking the rules. Those lambs, those goats, those bulls, those pigeons are the same sort of thing. It's a fine. It's a fine from God's kingdom to you for doing something wrong, for everything you've ever done wrong as you walked away from him. The ultimate fine really is death. You know, essentially you've, you are part of God's creation and God created you and so God owns you and then because of our own choices and our own desire to try and walk our own path, we essentially kill ourselves spiritually. And so actually there's a death penalty for that and, and that is that you, you know, you're not connected with God anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's about out of order, isn't it? And so there's a penalty. And the Bible says the penalty is you need to die. In the New Testament, 
we don't have lambs and goats and sheep and all that sort of stuff. We have this lovely fellow called Jesus that I've been talking about so much who decided that he wanted to come down from heaven where he was, the Bible says, the prince of heaven. Um, and if you're darling Zetch, then you'll know him as the darling of heaven. You know, like, you know, a bit like back in the heyday, you know, old David Beckham was the darling of the United Kingdom, wasn't he? Bless him. He's not here anymore. He left us, didn't he? But Jesus will never leave you. So what I did there. Um, but it says, the darling of heaven, or the prince of heaven, came down to earth to be your sacrifice, to pay the price for all of the fines that you've done wrong, all the things you've ever done wrong. Which is good news, isn't it? And so, in being sacrificed, he literally acts as though he is your lamb, your goat, or your million goats. You know, because if you're anything like me and you've got a load of sins, you know, then you need as many goats and sheep as you can get. You know? You probably couldn't even count how many you've done if you're anything like me. And so what happens is Jesus makes way for us to be put right with God. It's almost like he reintroduces the seed from that dead sunflower back to the soil. And then the Bible says that God waters it. And then guess what? It grows. In fact, it says this. Jesus said that the seed of faith that is this sermon is like a little mustard seed that gets planted within you and it grows up to be like a mighty oak tree that the birds of the air come to rest in it. Crazy, isn't it? You might feel like a little... You know mustard seeds are tiny, aren't they? You might feel like a tiny little mustard seed right now, like insignificant, lost amongst loads of other stuff going on in the world and lost in your own world, lost to it all. And then God simply says, hey, if you come back to me today, I'll grow you into a mighty oak tree. Why? Because Jesus said, the Father raises the dead and he gives them life. The Father raises the dead and he gives them life. If you feel that your faith and your spirit is dead, then the good news today, Jesus says, is that the Father raises the dead and gives them life. If you feel dead today, the Father can raise you. Jesus can too, because he gives life to whom he wishes. What does life mean? What does life mean? Everyone's got an idea what life means in there, don't they? Um, I think, and oh, mate, it's already 25 past. I'm going to go quick. Is that all right? Um, I'm going to spend not much time on this bit. Some of you guys already feel like I'm speaking to you and you want to be made alive, right? Yeah? You feel like you want to be made alive. Maybe you made a commitment to follow Jesus a long time ago, but somewhere along the lines you started, you just stopped getting watered, you know? Stopped rocking up, rocking up at church and then you, you stopped getting watered and then you shriveled up and died anyway, even though you didn't get out of the pot. You know what I mean? It's okay because God still does watering, so you can still keep on coming back. I am, um, oh, I'm really sorry. I've just gone, here we go. We're going to go for it, okay? You're hanging around for a little bit longer? Thank you. No one even answered, but I'm saying thank you anyway. I am... Um, I come across a plant the other day in my house. Laura had put it on the windowsill. And I noticed this little plant, what was left of it, like a little tiny bit of leaf. And I thought, that looks like a lily. And so it's not meant to be on the windowsill. That thing wants it dark, you know? And her mum had said, I've tried bringing that thing back to life a million times, and I just couldn't bring it back to life, right? And then Laura's like, I've tried loads, I've, I've tried giving it no water, I've tried giving it some water, I've, I've tried everything, it's just not coming back to life, I, can't, I just can't do it. So I'm going to chuck it in the bin, I said, give me it. So I put it into, um, into we've got like a little room at the front of our house, where there's not really any light in there at all, and, and it's like, we keep all of my tools in there at the moment, because I've got a shed. I put this little plant in there, and it just stayed in the dark, just stayed in the dark for ages. And I just gave it a little tiny little spray, Every other day, little spray every other day. And then this 
I think just before Urban Wave, I was like, went in there and I was like, this thing is like, poof, it's like up and out. It's come back to life. It looked like it was dead and dry. It looked like it had been mistreated and had no more life in it. But then, <laughs> and it probably had been mistreated. Bless the ladies. You know, you've got to have the touch, haven't you? You've got to know flowers, you know? Anyway, it looked like it was a goner. In fact, she was going to chuck it in a bin. But I chose to give it one last go in the dark. Because sometimes, sometimes you've got to get into the dark to realise what light is, you know? Sometimes you've got to get into the dark to know what you're missing and realise what life is. Anyway, so this little plant is back alive now. Just give it a little tiny bit of water and some darkness, because that's what it wanted, darkness. You know, one of the reasons I try to uh, not have all the bright lights on in here is because for people that are brand new to church and have not, would never normally come in here, they need to find a dark corner to hang out. Because actually, the physical, like the actual light sometimes feels like the spiritual light and so if if we make it dark in the room then people who are used to dark in their in their spirit feel a little bit more comfortable if you ever wondered why we try to make it dark everywhere <laughs> it's so that people feel comfortable in the dark so eventually i can sow a few seeds of light out there and go anyone want to anyone want to catch that thing Shall we plant that seed in your heart today? Do you want life today? Life to me isn't actually all that perfect all of the time, if I'm honest. Jesus gave me life and it's great. Way better life than what I ever had, but it's still pretty tough. So I don't want to lie to you and tell you it's all going to get perfect. But if you wanted to commit to following Jesus today and have him come and bring you back to life because the son also gives life to whom he wishes. If that's what you want today, then hey, you can come and be part of this crazy wild family and just be soaked in love, watered, treated in a way that is specific for you. The sunflower would need to be out in the sun, wouldn't it? But that little lily just didn't, didn't, didn't need the sun. Different people need to be treated in different ways in order to grow. And if you feel like you are ready to start growing again and go from death to life, then today we should give you the opportunity. Shall we stand together? Mostly because I'm out of time. I wanted to keep on preaching, but I want to not abuse your time. I've got so much more to say about Jesus. In John 10, it says that Jesus had the power to bring himself back to life. Okay? Jesus has the power to bring himself back to life. He also has the power to bring you back to life. And he wants to. He chose to go to a brutal death and be humiliated so that you could have life, so that you could be brought back to life. And if you've not accepted that life, then may I say, candidly, you're a fool. If you'd like that life and you'd like to live for him and for you, then I want to give you the opportunity to do so. It's as much as, it's as much as closing your eyes with me and just telling the truth. Jesus, I did choose my own way. I'm really aware of that. Jesus, I actually don't like 
the death that I'm living right now. And I want to be made right. I want to get right with you. I want you to bring me back to life. Jesus, will you give me life? I thank you that you're so kind. I thank you that you're so kind in offering me life. I want to live it. I want to receive it. So bring me back to life today. If you agree with that prayer and that's your prayer, the word amen simply means yes, I want that for me too. You can join me in saying amen. Yes, I want that for me too. Hallelujah. It seems that lots of people in the room today were being impacted by uh, the words that were being said and the, and the message that was being brought across during the talk. If you're one of those people and you feel like you'd like to make a commitment to follow Jesus, it's really easy. All you have to do is say within your heart, Jesus, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I commit myself to you and ask that you make me alive, that you make me born again. And in doing so, the Bible says that as you commit your life to following Jesus, he will forgive you and make you new. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. So maybe you'd like to go and explain to a friend or Christian that you know that you've made the decision to follow Jesus and that he is Lord of your life. Simply by saying, once again, Jesus is Lord. For now, though, I hope that you have a blessed rest of the day. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you soon.